Dr Tom Argles has been a lecturer at the Open University for about 10 years. Here, filmed on location in Bhutan in May 2010, he talks through how to take an oriented geological sample for structural analysis. So we've arrived at this exposure, which is of very, very strongly sheared rock. You might be able to see the foliation dipping away off to my left. Now we want to do structural analysis on this rock, and so we're going to take an oriented sample. Now the piece we've selected is this block here, and you can see that the foliation plane is exposed here. Now for, to do structural analysis on this rock, we need to know exactly what position it was in, in the original exposure. So to orient this sample, there are two ways you could do it. One is to draw a strike line, and that would be oriented roughly like that. A strike line is a line with no dip on the surface of the rock. But in this case, we actually have a feature in the rock which you can see on this surface running down like this, which is stretched minerals called a lineation. And because that's much more use for structural work, that's what I'm going to mark on the rock. So I'm just literally going to mark a line running up parallel to the lineation. I'm going to put an arrow to indicate that the lineation is plunging, and I'm going to put a tick on one side of the lineation and mark up the direction. The lineation is plunging towards azimuth 149, so I'm going to write that on the rock, like so, at that end of the arrow. And we also therefore know that the tick is pointing towards west. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put top to indicate that this is the top surface of the rock. To take this sample I'm going to use a broad bladed cold chisel and this hammer, geologist's hammer. And I'm also of course going to be wearing my eye protection. So if you'd like to put your eye protection on as well, please. Thank you. This is the rock sample that I've collected from this exposure. And you can see that most of the markings have survived. But we've lost, for instance, the word top, denoting that this is actually the top surface. So I'm going to remark that now on this top surface. But all the other markings are intact, the plunge of the lineation, the west, and this azimuth of the plunge of the lineation. So now I'm going to just put this in a bag and take it back for structural analysis. Because there are a number of sharp corners on this rock, and I'm just going to just tap them off very lightly and just try and round them off so that it doesn't split the bag when you put it in the bag. It's got quite a long way to go before it gets back to the university, this rock. So it's quite likely that these sharp edges and corners will do some damage to the bag and may even split it completely. This is a bag for the sample, as one of my I made earlier, and it contains all the information that you need to record about taking a theological sample. Up here is the sample number, which in this case is exactly the same as the locality number. This is the date that it was collected. This is the name of the rock here, Mylonite, which just means simply a very sheared rock. And uh, down here is the name of the locality. Um, this is a particular geologist who identified this rock originally. This is the river valley we're in. But most importantly of all, you've got the structural information here that we've penned on top of the sample. Um, so that's the plunge of the lineation, that arrow to 149, and the west and tick and the top mark as well. So that, that is duplicated both here on the bag, on the rock specimen itself, and in my notebook as well. If you would like more information about Himalayan geology, our research, or available PhD studentships, please contact us at the Department of Environment, Earth and Ecosystems.